Huddle with Corporate Cars, delivering affordable, luxury European vehicles nationwide. And tonight, Bill Ralston is with us. Thank you, Bill. Hello. And uh, we have Cameron Slater from Whale Oil. Hi, Cam. Hey, Larry. Uh, Bill, uh, first up is the leaky home thing and the Law Commission recommending basically to put a cap on council's legal liability of $300,000 for a single dwelling, 150000 per unit for, uh, well, an apartment and $3 million cap per multi-unit developments. What do you see in this? Good, bad? And what do you think? Well, I think it's, it's actually not bad. I think it's actually quite good. You know, I mean, forget the Christchurch earthquake. New Zealand taxpayers, ratepayers, are paying out far more on leaky homes than they're either going to put. It's equivalent to about three um, Christchurches as far as the taxpayers are concerned. And if anything to cap the liability, you know, imagine if Wellington was hit. I mean, and the liability we would all oh, face please, yet that again. would be wonderful. No, no, wouldn't it? <laughs> no, no. Uh, but, yeah, oh, sorry, Bill, carry on. No, well, I'm just saying I think it's really good the Law Commission is doing this. Um, uh, Collins welcomed their report. Um, I'm reasonably hope, hopeful that, in fact, you know, they can actually enact it and get it through fairly quickly, particularly if they can, It would be especially nice if they could do it before the end of this part. Right, you see, Cam, the thing is the councils are bearing the brunt, the bottomless pit last resort uh, type of thing because all these dodgy companies are liquidating, going and solving, that sort of thing. Something had to be done. Well, I, I take a bit of a different tack on this. Yes, this is good in terms of, of some relief for the ratepayers, but the reality is there won't be any relief from the ratepayers. So while this is being capped, that just frees up the politicians and the councils to spend money on other things. But the real problem that I've got here is that if you empower the councils to sign off on building consent, and, and processes to ensure that buildings are being built correctly, then surely they are the people that are responsible for ensuring these things get built properly because they are the ones who rubber stamp it and, 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 uh, and check it off. And, I might add charge extortionate fees for the privilege of that rubber well, that's, stamp. That's the problem, Cam. I mean, you know, if you've ever built anything recently, you know, the controls and uh, you know are so onerous, the expense is enormous, the competence levels are probably in the lower, lower one or twos, um, you know, so you don't get a lot for your money. As a ratepayer, I wouldn't mind seeing my liability capped to at least, you know... Yeah, what, as a ratepayer, I agree. But the problem I have is these these little Napoleons in these building <laughs> consent places mm. are, are out of control, holding a gun to people's heads, charging them extortionate fees, and then when someone comes to hold them to account for their shonky inspections and their dodgy reporting, then they go, oh, no, please, can we change the law? It's gutlessness. Yeah. And, and, and for that reason alone is why I, I think that... There needs to be some holding to account. Unfortunately, because they are little Napoleons and the politicians aren't much better, it's the ratepayers that pay the brunt. Yeah, I, I think there's a certain degree of truth in that, Cam, but Bill, either of you, really, I think it's impossible to predict a home is going to leak in 10 years. Or, uh, but look, well, it is. Uh, yeah. um, you know, we have no idea of... of, of um, I, I know they've brought in controls that should see a lesser amount of it, but you can never guarantee. And as you pointed out, Larry, before, you know, a building company just instantly has to go yeah. into insolvency. It's and who's left carrying the, all, all the cash? Right, I'm sorry, me. Well, he, he, here's the answer, and I think... I think, uh, and Mr. Knapp, Dr. Knapp, uh, uh, Map, should I say, not Knapp, Map, um, he, he, um, he pointed this out. What they want to do is get to a system where they have in Britain where when you build a home or something, obviously the client has to pay for this, but you insure it against all of the stuff. And John Gray from the Leaky Building People, he's saying the same sort of thing, that we need to bring in this type of insurance because there are too many cowboys out there, and if we've got this, this will screw the cowboys and they'll go out of business before they build all the dodgy homes, you know? Well, they won't go out of business, though, Larry, because they'll just phoenix themselves into some sort of new dodgy outfit. Uh, but there's a real good indicator for, a, for, for avoiding a leaky home. If any um, real estate agent or... Or, um, or person is advertising their house as being architecturally designed, there's a good indicator there it's going to leak like a sieve. <laughs> <laughs> I think there's a wild exaggeration and a terrible insult to the nation. <laughs> okay. uh, we'll come back in a moment. Bill Ralston and uh, Cam Slater on the huddle. It's coming up 15 to 6. At 7 p.m. on Prime. Asking oh. questions and waiting for answers. It's Larry Williams Drive with ANZ, the bank with more local experts. On News Talk ZB. Bill Austin, Cam Slater on the huddle issue number two, Cam. 
the debate going on about the schoolboy who refused to get his hair cut and took the school to court. What do you see in this? I think he's a snotty little upstart and he <laughs> should cut his hair. I mean, we, we have rules for a reason. There's, there's a reason why schools have rules. And, you know, the logical conclusion of, of his argument is, well, if we don't like the fact that the speed limit's 100 and we feel like we can drive at 105, well, that's all right. We'll go to the High Court and argue that. It's just ridiculous, and and this the parents of this kid are teaching him that he can thumb his nose at, at authority. They yep. should just get some shears out and give him a good old army cut of a number one. <laughs> okay, <laughs> I think I think you know, Larry. I think it's not about whether this kid can have his hair at that length mm. or not. It's about obeying the rules of the school. He signed up to that school. Yep. His parents and he knew the rules for that school. He's chosen not to obey them. And frankly, he, I mean, he hasn't got a leg to stand on. And I'm watching the television coverage in court and the lawyers arguing, oh, hoo, hoo, my Lord, we're not here to split hairs. Ho, ho, ho. You know, it's, <laughs> he's comparing this kid to Martin Luther King. Yeah. No, he's one of the biggest little brat who needs his hair cut. All right. Yeah. Okay. Uh, don't disagree. Anyway, Cam, uh, issue three, the uh, donation from Dong Wa Lu to a rowing club has been confirmed, $2,000. Uh, this was Mr Barker, I think his daughter went to the rowing club or something like that. And uh, Labor is now calling for Mr Lu to put up evidence to substantiate the claims. They have called in a senior barrister. I don't know, what are you seeing it now? Well... Uh, Labour will be ruining the day that they called out a multi-millionaire uh, Chinese businessman who's well adept with dealing with corrupt politicians in China. Uh, he'll have the records, and what we're seeing here is well, there was a trip in, uh, down the Yangtze River, floating down the Yangtze River, confirmed. There was a donation to the Hawke's Bay Rowing Club, confirmed. We're all we're waiting for now is how much and how often he donated for the rest, and I suspect that will be confirmed as well. And Mr Barker is looking very slippery indeed because he's pretended that he doesn't know anything about this fellow except flying you know, 3,800 kilometres to China and then taking another 1,800-kilometre trip to, to Kongqing in a three-and-a-half-hour drive out to a cement factory and back again, and he says he barely knows the fellow. Yeah, it's stretching uh, the, the bounds of belief uh, that, that Mr Barker is actually telling the truth. And we we're ending up now with a barrister, a high-paid barrister, I would imagine. I don't know any lowly paid ones. Uh, sitting there investigating all of the donations in the, in the Labour Party, someone's got the money. Who trousered the cash? Because it's becoming apparent that Dong Hua Lu did actually pay some money. So who trousered it? Well, I think back in those days, Larry, they also had um, the Chinese community and the Chinese business community um, holding fundraisers for them at the same time. I don't know whether Mr Liu was involved in that or not, but, you know, those are ways in which some of the money could have been pumped into Labour without them actually physically knowing about it mm. in theory. I mean, you know, why, I suppose the argument is Mr Liu has made these allegations. They're all standing there saying, oh, no, you know, we don't know anything about it. He should prove it. Well, it's a kind of odd situation, isn't it, where you ask someone to prove an allegation, but I suppose that's all he can do. I'd like to see Mr Lou come forward and um, um, let's document every cent that went into both of the parties. And I think he will, and, and that's where I, I guess it's a bit of a pox on both of their houses um, in terms of that, but at least we do know that donations that he's, uh, that he's given to the National Party so far, it appears, have been declared. I know there's a great deal of uh, talk about this. He said he donated equally. I, I think that's maybe a bit of a, um, a mistranslation of poor English. He's, he's meaning he's given to both parties, not necessarily the same amounts. Yeah, well, a pet of good fellow, the National Party president, being a bit coy, saying he can't say whether there are other, other donations. I mean, is that that he's not willing to say or that he just hasn't got a clue? I mean, I think a good fellow really <laughs> should... you know uh, what my thoughts on that are. Well, really. exactly, but I, I really think he needs to become a little bit clearer about that and uh, just let everyone know. But never forget, you know, it, it, this is really a story about uh, David Cunliffe making a tit of himself by attacking uh, the Don La uh, Walu um, 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 donation 
Collins without first clarifying whether his own party got him mm. or not, and secondly, whether his own party complied with the law in declaring those donations. Well, well quite. I mean, they dug this, uh, this pit that they found themselves in. They sat there with the shovels furiously digging away on Judith Collins and Oravida and Dong Hua Lu and John Banks and everything else. And hello, uh, these same people are all involved with the Labour Party okay. as well. Thank you, Cameron Slater and Bill Ralston on the Huddle News Talks at B. It is now 8 to 6.